Hi, I'm Lionel. I'm working at Protocol Labs within IPFS Stewards Group. Uh, I was sure I will come up with a better <laughs> title, and I left that on purpose uh, also to remind myself that the direction of this talk uh, was in the flux during this week, and um, I redid a bunch of slides uh, based on sessions uh, related to writable gateways, the way we think about HTTP as a transport and so on, and also happenings in our um, wider IPFS ecosystem where we uh, renamed Go IPFS to Kubo and uh, create, created much more space for people to create more implementations. Um, so it's work in progress, but I think it's food for, good food for thought uh, to uh, be aware of recent happenings. So it's a state of IPFS and HTTP as today, where we are, why we are here, um, what we need to do uh, short term, and what exciting things may happen. So, um, for a long time, the way people thought about IPFS over HTTP or the presence of IPFS within HTTP was shaped by a single implementation named Go IPFS. It's now, now called Kubo, but uh, the way it worked, you had uh, the daemon, you started the daemon, it was IPFS node, and it opened two ports. Uh, on one port, it had IPFS and IPNS namespaces, and on another port, it had API v0. Um, so the one port was the gateway, um, and the second port was the RPC specific to this implementation of IPFS to this specific daemon. Um, and the API, it's still at our docs website, even today. Uh, and it's called HTTP RPC API. So is it like IPFS API for HTTP? Well, that's the only thing there with HTTP. So no wonder people use it as a way of and they use it for creating mental models for working with IPFS. Um, it's the same. The problem is this interface was never designed to be used, consumed by like external uh, entities, for sure to not be used in the web browser context. It was designed for a, to be consumed by a command line client. So your command line tool detected, oh, is the daemon running? If so, I will talk to it using this RPC. And that's why it looks weird. People are, is it REST? Of course it's not. It's a proprietary RPC specific to Kubo uh, implementation of IPFS. So um, I think w one lesson learned is that IPFS implementations should be free to have their own RPCs. And we already see that. It's not like we are suddenly permitting people to do that. JSAPFS already went their own direction with a subset of uh, RPCs. Initially, it just copied what Kubo did. IRO, uh, IPFS implementation in Rust, uses gRPC. They already went their own way. And the point here is that those RPCs are fine if you want to interact or orchestrate the specific implementation of IPFS, but it's not the stable foundation for you uh, to create long, and for us, to create a long-term HTTP story uh, for IPFS. Um, and that's why we go back to that gateway, which was present. It was always present, but it was undervalued, and also under, um, uh, we, we never like, invested fully in the gateway um, as an impl implementation agnostic generic HTTP interface for retrieving and maybe ingesting content address data. But I would like switch our mindset away from legacy RPCs specific to one implementation and focus wider IPFS community or people who care about content address data and not really about specifics of uh, how it's implemented to use gateways as a mental model. And I will try in the following slides to uh, make a case that it may be enough for 80% of things that you want to do. And for remaining 20, you can use uh, implementation specific RPCs. Um, if you use gateway, uh, you can swap implementations, URL stays the same, the behavior stays the same. 
I can swap, uh, probably I could swap uh, Kubo for Iro and I would not even notice it. Companion may not, Companion may notice it right now because it's still talking to that RPC, but after we rewrite it for manifest v3, you should be able to just swap the gateways. Um, Brave, right now, it embeds uh, Kubo um, and orchestrates it using uh, RPC, but the interface that is backing IPFS and IPNS protocol handlers, it's not that RPC, it's the gateway. Um, so as long as the implementa new implementation, better implementation, more suited for this, uh, like used in a browser, comes in, uh, swap, swapping it up will, should not require Brave Team to change stuff. Um, so implementation agnostic APIs are what I'd like to talk going forward. And uh, implementation specific APIs, they have their place, but I don't think that's the way of doing interrupt. Um, so closing the Go IPFS era, uh, what's new, what's recent, uh, what new possibilities in the uh, gateway world uh, happened uh, that are good to know when the most important part is we now have specs for HTTP gateways. Historically, we had implementation in Go IPFS and JS IPFS, um, but website docs, they said uh, there's RPC, there was no gateway presence there. The specifications for HTTP gateways are in IPFS specs repo, and the specification itself is split into multiple layers. The most of uh, common behaviors are in path gateway. This is the oldest type of gateway. Um, and it's a low level uh, specification around HTTP protocol. Uh, we have trustless gateway, which is a subset of that, only for sending blocks and cars. Uh, it's for uh, fetching content address data without trusting gateway. And we have a web, we have a gateway uh, types which are specifically designed for use in the web. Uh, subdomain gateway and the NSLink gateway provide, namely, origin isolation and that final Web2 gateway, which is the NSLink. So I, I, I mentioned, I shared like our, ourselves that our docs still say RPC API uh, and no HTTP gateway. So the, we are in the process of renaming Go IPFS to Kubo. And when Kubo 0.14 ships, we will merge a pull request which re reorganizes uh, documentation around our APIs and common line interfaces and part uh, and HTTP APIs are part of that. So we will be making it very clear that the RPC, which was historically just named RPC, is Kubo specific, that the CLI is Kubo specific, and we will have this new entry as the very first thing people see, HTTP gateway, as the the default interface that the 80% of use uh, should be happy with, at least for data retrieval. So we talk about gateway APIs. Uh, I mentioned that during the first day, there's no API, there are just content paths, and you request content path from uh, the gateway and you get the data. Uh, by default, the gateway will do the work for you. It will deserial, even if it's Unix FS, it will deserialize it for you. Uh, if you use IPNS or other mutable pointer, it will also resolve that. Um, if you can use it in a browser context, it will provide you with origin isolation per content route. Um, however, the interesting thing that has happened recently is that we finally solved the problem of verifying the response that the gateway was sending to me. So historically, it was just files and directories, like the regular web. Uh, the serialization, all the content verification happened on the server. It was fine if you trusted the gateway. The problem was uh, when we started talking with uh, external projects interested in content addressing, and we mentioned uh, that, oh, there's this gateway for the interop with HTTP, there was always this question, like, what's the value of gateway? 
what is the value of content addressing if I'm not able to verify the response? Um, so in uh, GoIPFS 0.13, because it was still the old name, um, we shipped a block and car response formats. And now you are able to opt out from the serialization gateway, um, which means you can verify the response. You don't need to trust the gateway. It also means people who don't care about delegating trust to gateway have a smaller surface for implementation. And they now can uh, only implement car and block response formats. Um, So where we go from here, when we finally have content addressing on gateways for the very first time <laughs> after years? Um, it, this may be controversial, but I think it will be also entertaining. If you like squint your eyes a little bit, I will show you something. Um, so, HTTP itself supports gets for getting data. You are able to ask for a block, and you are able to ask for a bag of blocks. Uh, HTTP also has a head request when you only ask for headers without actually getting the payload. Um, so the question is, are, we, are those primitives enough to do something like HTTP transport? Um, and what, what existing transport do we have? There's graphing and so on. But I looked at the BitSwap because it's the, the simplest one. Um, so this is how BitSwap works. Um, like one peer asks another peer, hey, do you have the CID? Yes, I have it. OK, I want the CID. I, I want block for that CID. And the block is sent. That's it. That's the entire BitSwap. The, the complexity is in say, like optimization and characteristics of who do I ask, I, like remembering who was sending data to me related to DAG and so on, BitWap sessions. But the, low lev the lowest level primitives are literally just two uh, request types. Like, do you have the data? Can I have the data, please? Um, so now squinting. Uh, in HTTP, you can send a request with cache control only if cached. Um, and if you send that to some HTTP endpoints, uh, it will either, uh, and it, if it's like head request, you ask, hey, do you have this data? Yes, I have data, this data. Oh, can I have a block or a car? Yes, you can have that. So essentially, uh, you could talk to, uh, <laughs> you could talk to a gateway as a peer, uh, and we, could, we have like all the primitives will be there in Kubo 0.14, because I believe this is already, uh, support for only if cached header is already in master. And it will check, hey, uh, when Gateway processes the request, it will check local data store. Do I have this root block in my local data store? So you essentially know, oh, if, if there's no root block, that they don't have DAG and so on. Uh, so it may be even better than BitSwap, because you may choose, do I ask for a block, or do I ask for an entire uh, sub-branch? Um, and now, if we have this transport, HTTP transport uh, uh, exchange, for exchanging blocks and DAGs, what would be the main use cases? Well, for sure, mobile browsers, for sure IoT would benefit from that, because they cannot run peer-to-peer, -peer, at least not all the time. Uh, maybe they also don't want to announce blocks they have. Maybe you don't want to bro broadcast your browsing history. Maybe you have limited storage, and you only have ephemeral cache in the memory. Um, but then it's a useful transport. Like it may, it, it's no worse than BitSwap, probably. Uh, so maybe just regular Brave could switch to this. Uh, and users who have not imported any data could run it by default. Um, and maybe we could make it even better if you are able to request car with selector, then you get even better optimization. Um, around that. So just an idea, but primitives are there, just saying. Uh, so what are the other low-hanging fruits around uh, gateways and things that we have or may have with very little effort? Uh, retrieving directories at, at stars. Uh, if 
if you still want to delegate trust or if you run gateway as an interop glue in your infrastructure, being able to fetch entire directory tree, pipe it to a tar. Um, it's a small gap that we probably need to close. It's kind of like paying off technical debt. It's possible to do this right now using that RPC API, but it's missing from the gateway. Uh, another thing that's possible with the RPC from Kubo, but it's not possible at Gateway right now, it's requesting different IPLD formats than UNIXFS. Um, like all the code is there, we just need to expose it through the Gateway namespace uh, in a way that it's not painful for implementers. And of course, register <laughs> content types at IANA like we did for Block and IACAR. Uh, then web, website hosting, we could see now that we have specs and we can like specialize the gateway implementations uh, for website hosting could implement things like support for redirects, uh, enabling people to move their publishing from the legacy solutions to IPFS with as little friction as possible. Uh, what are... <laughs> More interesting, uh, uh, more, more interesting things that we could build uh, if we start uh, using Gateway as the, the, the building block. Um, I mentioned that um, the argument against Gateways was that, oh, there is no way to retrieve data in a trustless fashion. We've added block and car responses. But if you use DNS link, there's still a problem because <laughs> you need to resolve DNS link. Um, uh, the DNS link is a name which uh, you can use as a mutable pointer. Uh, it's kind of like a Web2 gateway. The problem is, <laughs> the problem is uh, to, you don't use DNS link directly. You use it to re resolve TXT record at a specific domain name, and that has the CID. So from that point, you have the verification because you can ask for a car for that, uh, that DAG. But the, the act of resolving DNS uh, TXT records was always a problem. You never had that end-to-end -end, uh, integrity guarantees. Uh, but maybe we could do better. Maybe we could, uh, now that we have car response format, uh, maybe we could include DNS sec proofs uh, along with responses for that domain name. And something like Brave or other web browser vendor could, behind the scenes, request car with DNS sec proofs. But in the user interface, it would look the same way as it does right now. You see IPNS, you see regular website. Just like you don't see, is it going over HTTP3, HTTP2, uh, some CDNs or load balancer or whatever. Some things could be abstracted away uh, and some additional integrity could be included without adding anything new. Uh, the car, it would be just additional block. The format, it would be Duxibor. So. Uh, limiting the surface for implementers. Um, and then all this talk was about retrieving data from IPFS. What we, if we could push data to IPFS somehow? Uh, we were calling this writable gateways, but I'm experimenting with different names. And I, I picked the most, uh, the, the one I did not li like the most, uh, just to force people to provide a better name. Uh, so ideas welcome. Uh, but the idea is, there are ty different types of things that you would like to ingest into IPFS. Uh, a file, a directory tree, more than one level, or just random content address data that you created with external tools. Um, and that's just one time import. What if we could um, start patching existing data? Do I need to like, fetch entire Wikipedia to add one article? Probably not. Uh, luckily, we have uh, now IPLD patch. Um, the spec is in IPLD IO website. In general, it's based on JSON patch. And where it gets interesting is that IPLD data model can be represented as the JSON documents. Those are valid JSON documents. Um, so in theory, you could be patching arbitrary IPLD data using this. And if we add support on gateways, you could be interacting with gateway with JSON uh, without any additional software, without any additional libraries, 
and so on. Um, Maybe uh, exists like we there's some technical depth on the IPFS namespace and it's around file system so it's still like files directories. Uh, if you are living in a trust uh, trusted context, maybe we could have IPLD namespace uh, with uh, more advanced transformations. Uh, and I will pause here. I think I I don't know if I run out of time or whatever, but uh, that's kind of like the landscape. I think the takeaway is that. Uh, the gateways are here, and it's probably the thing that we should be talking the most, or like investing the most, because that's the, the common interface and the smallest surface. Everything else will be painful for us, uh, and was and is already. So um, specs are there. Uh, if you want to propose improvement, the, read the first improvement proposal for more details, and I believe that's it. Uh, if I have time, I can take questions. If not, I will remove myself. Yeah, we can do a, we can do a question or two. Um, so you mentioned all of these new gateway capabilities. Are there non-Kubo gateways that are kind of like signaling internally that they want to support these new features? Or is this something where we have some ideas, but we still need to convince everyone else to adopt them? So interestingly, uh, before we added tr like trustless responses to Kubo itself, uh, there was like really no point in trying to fight that battle without uh, doing the temperature check from people who are already operating gateways. Is this something they will be comfortable with? Uh, so we talked with uh, uh, existing gateway operators um, and got like my yes. And also that removes uh, risk from them for some of them. So now if you are a person, you can run only the trustless gateway and you no longer host the serialized data, which removes some risks. Um, I lost my train of thought. Could you remind me? Um, do we have buy-in for these resources? And non kubo And non-Kubo. Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, IRO, uh, Rust implementation, uh, they already, like, they prioritize gateway. They use it for measuring their uh, performance and so on. So for sure, we, we also have uh, PAV gateway in JSAPFS. Uh, so hopefully over time, uh, we'll see more and more implementations. Uh, kind of to open that discussion, I, I think in general, um, you need both in that if we don't get major IPFS operators to run it, it doesn't actually matter even what we add to Kubo because it'll just not run stuff. Um, so I think we're at a little chicken and egg of where we're switching to a new process and that's good. So Fission has one person dedicated to the Kubo code base, even though we don't intend to do that because we wanted to show a working implementation in Kubo. So I expect this to change over time, where a first reference implementation may not be in Kubo. Exactly. Uh, and, and that'll kind of like switch over, over time is, is what I expect to see. Um, this was really interesting on a very high focused on HTTP. Obviously, the default transport that our friend the browser communicates to. Uh, I wanted to ask what you think about um, the uh, priority of other transports like your friend and mine, WebRTC, that also is a, a browser-friendly transport? Yeah, uh, I'd say it will depend on the runtime. Uh, and by the runtime, I mean both uh, the execution environment, but also like the, the, the hardware itself. So for example, WebRTC sounds good, but then you try to run a lot of connections to peers in Chromium, and you no longer have good time or if you switch to a different tab, existing connections get like hard throttled. Um, so it depends. I think that the power of HTTP is in that um, it's the lowest level. It's kind of like the lowest denominator of sorts. You know it always works. It may not be as fast as BitSwap, let's say, or it may not be as flexible as all like truly peer-to-peer -peer as WebRTC, but then it always works. Uh, and I think when it comes to uh, implementations, it will depend. If you have a mobile browser, it will probably, to save battery, default to HTTP. If it's like too slow, if non-gateway has data, maybe I will spawn a small peer-to-peer -peer node, ask local peers 
for data and then shut it down. Uh, if I have some data that I pinned and I want to like to keep providing that at least for 24 hours, maybe there's some uh, code responsible for running lip 2 p stack with BitSwap and other things. Or maybe we have, uh, maybe we just create a car and push that to external gateway, which like ingests it and caches it. Maybe like a content address alliance could figure out a way for this like a temporary ephemeral thing when I like cl close my laptop, it's still around, right? You said you have somebody prototyping something in Kubo. Is that the redirects? Yep. Work? Okay. Thanks, Lionel.